Welcome back to the channel. We're out at Chester County Transmissions for a charger video. Not just any charger video. We're doing a full-blown installation of the Corsa long tube headers. We are probably gonna break this video down into like two or three videos. This video, we're gonna do the complete removal. I was on YouTube searching the YouTube interwebs to see how you can remove the, the stock manifolds from these 6.4 liter Hemis, and there's nothing. I mean, there's the, the videos out there are crap. So we're gonna do a better job, and we're gonna show you following courses instructions. We may deviate here and there, and we're also gonna give you any tips or tricks during the, the removal of the stock manifolds. We're already done one of the steps. <laughs> I already have that removed. The covers on the engine, they're actually fuel line covers, I believe that's what they call it, or fuel rail covers. The fuse box cover, well this is my little uh, protector right now because they're out at GRC Blasting getting hydro dipped. But we're gonna walk you through everything. Right Pete? Yes. <laughs> out with Pete again guys, I know you missed them. All right guys, so step one, very simple. You're gonna pop your trunk, you're going to Got a nice little strap here, holds that up, and you're going to disconnect the negative battery terminal. We're going to be messing with the starter. There you go. Get a rag and put that over that. Back to the front of the car, step two, we're going to unplug the air intake sensor, which is in your intake. There it goes. It's going to use an eight millimeter to zip these off. Lefty Lucy. Yeah, it's the factory bolt that right. they actually reused. So again, this is going to be a little bit different for you guys with the stock air box. You're just going to have to remove your stock air box. Nice thing doing it this way. We could probably just take this thing out as one whole unit now. Is it bolted down by the No, nope. nope. You should be able to pull it right out. There you go. Whoa. Air intake is out. We use a 10 mil to unbolt the coolant reservoir. There's two of them. And then we're just gonna basically secure it out of the way so to give us access to loosening this clamp. All right, make sure you relieve the pressure in your coolant overflow tank before you disconnect any hoses. And that the vehicle's cold. And that the vehicle's cold, yeah. The vehicle's hot, guys. We uh, had to drive it to get here. Didn't give it a lot of time to sit, so it's better to do this while the vehicle is cold. Plugging that for now, and it's, I mean, it's just gonna give us a little bit more room to get down there. You do have a line at the bottom of your coolant reservoir. Yeah. But we're gonna leave it there for now. So we're gonna unplug and remove the rear O2 sensors. Once you get the driver's side on plug, guys, you're gonna notice that there's a clip pulling the wire to the O2 sensor. Going into the side of the transmission, you're gonna to wanna to pop that clip. Now you're gonna remove your O2 sensors. If you don't have O2 sensor socket removal tool, you can use a 22 millimeter wrench. All right, and with these O2 sensors, guys, you're gonna wanna mark them, label them, because you're gonna need them again. And now the passenger side rears out. So that's the tool you use, guys, to remove it. There's a little cutout for your wire. Neat. Makes life a lot easier, getting a box wrench in there. You don't want to mix these up though. Pete's just looking to see if there's a difference in the plug. I'm not seeing a difference. No man. difference. Of course, it does not want you to, to mix, them up. mix them up. Maybe the computer got used to one. So this is how we're separating. We're going to put one on the passenger side that belongs on the passenger side of the lift <laughs> and the other one on the driver's side. <coughs> but you can mark them if you're doing this in your garage and you don't have a lot of space or you're not using the lift. 
All right, moving on to the next step, guys. He's gonna use a 10 mil to remove the, the belly pan. So you have four bolts holding the belly pan. We're gonna remove the clamps to our Corsa X pipe that leads to our mid pipes. Same thing if you have a factory exhaust. We had to <laughs> use a different clamp there. Broke one of the clamps during the install. Next step, you're gonna use a 16 millimeter socket to remove the two nuts on the driver side cowlick. And then you're gonna repeat the process on the passenger side. It's nice that this car only has 5,000 miles on it. Oh yeah. I tried. Yeah, you're gonna have to use something else. I'm gonna have to use maybe like a ratchet wrench or something. Um, you may wanna wipe that down. <laughs> I wiped the lens. <laughs> Passenger side top flange nut, you're gonna have to use a, a wrench to break it loose. Throws foot line wrench. It's a line foot. A line foot. There it is. We're gonna remove these cross braces to try to get the and the whole exhaust to go down a little bit so we can remove the cowlick converters. I'm gonna jump in guys and help Pete drop this. Now that we got the converters out guys, made it much easier. <laughs> Dropping those support braces across there to get the exhaust down enough to remove the catalytic converters from the flanges up here. Yeah, they had to go down. Now we're gonna remove the two sensors. Of course, it's telling us that we wanna label them as well to make sure we put them in the same position when we reinstall the long tube headers. doing our labeling system it's going to go on the front lift arm because we know that it's got to go back to the front driver side and now we're removing the passenger side of the two sensors now these are different oh, the plugs are different okay labeled now that we got the o2 sensors out all of them are out now pete's going to mark the steering shaft and then he's gonna remove that 10 millimeter bolt to make sure that the steering wheel doesn't turn while you have the shaft disconnected from it. We've used the seat belt through the steering wheel. This way, it won't inadvertently turn and possibly damage your clock spring. Now with that 10 millimeter bolt out, don't lose it. You're gonna be reusing it, of course, because you're gonna to need to steer your car. And you're gonna separate the steering shaft now. There you go. Now that we got the shaft separated, you're gonna remove that eight millimeter bolt right there. And that's to the heat shield for the starter. With the eight millimeter bolt removed, you're gonna remove these two 13 millimeter bolts on the back side. And then you're gonna remove the heat shield. Whew. You gonna remember how to put that back in? <laughs> yeah. And you're gonna keep this, guys, because you're gonna be reusing that. Next step, guys, you're gonna remove the positive cable going to your starter with a 13 millimeter socket. It says 12 in course's instructions, but from our car, it's a 13. There it is. Now you're gonna to wanna to unplug that little harness right there going to your starter. 
that goes. Now with the harness and plug from the starter, we're going to remove the starter by unbolting the 15 millimeter bolts. Get the starter out, guys. Pete's gonna tell you what he did. This plastic cover goes over your hot side of your starter. So it's getting in the way of this flange. If I was trying to come out this way, and even when I was trying to go up, which is the way I had to go, I had to go up. Like this. And then like that. And that plastic was enough that it was binding the starter between the starter and the bell housing. With it, it's out of, with it out of the way, it comes out. Once you figure out the method to the madness. See, some tips and tricks, man. I told you we'd have a few for you. To start her out, guys, we're gonna remove the knock sensor, which is on the driver's side, which is, I'll get my finger up there, that guy right there, using a 13 mil socket. Now that we have the knock sensor out, it's on to removing the driver's side manifold. So we're gonna use a 10 millimeter ratchet and socket, potentially a, a wrench in some places. Of course, they're saying they're giving us a pro tip, remove the two middle upper bolts first for easier access. It may be easier to access some of the manifold bolts from the engine bay rather than underneath the vehicle. So we're gonna show you along the way, guys, but we're on to the manifold bolts. It's coming out soon. Pete got three of the top manifold bolts out. But this was set out of the way. So you can get tools and your hand back there. Loosen these lines by undoing this bracket. And it's only moving that much, but that was enough so that I could get my hand down here and guide the socket onto the, onto the bolt. Otherwise, it's a really tight pinch unless you have smaller wrists. Top three, not that bad really. Cool. Where was this bracket at? This bracket? You see right here, oh, held down by yeah. that, Okay. You undo it, and you only have to slide it over a quarter that inch, and that gives you enough to... able to unbolt three from the top starting from the front of the block to the back got the top one over here from below and then all the rest from below and there she goes one, one two rinse repeat yep gonna remove the heat shield from the passenger side knock sensor just like that you're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket to remove the knock sensor from the block we're gonna use a wrench and you're gonna use a <laughs> We're lowering the car so we can remove the top forwardmost manifold bolts on the top side. And then we're gonna remove the dipstick. Oh, that's wow. One. That's one. We got that forwardmost top Bumper. manifold <laughs> bolt out. Whoa. It is definitely a lot tighter on the passenger side, that's for sure. Oh, there you go. Do we have the O-ring still? Oh, we still have the O-ring. We're good. Next, we'll be undoing the rest of the manifold bolts on the passenger side from underneath. That's what they say. I'll see it when I believe, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> maybe I won't believe it when I or see, when, see it when I believe it. The instruction's been pretty good so far. So far. Yeah. We're gonna remove these two foil packs to give us a little bit more room. A lot tighter on this side versus this side. I love that fancy double plug. 
It's better than it was. We're gonna be able to get that one. The third one's a little tough to get from the top. Very tough. Success. That's the only place we're going to use it, those two. Well guys, with the menagerie of extensions, ratchets, yes. wrenches, uh, swivel attachments, we were able to unbolt this side, finally. finally. That's that one right above the motor mount. That's yeah. really tight in there. Yeah. Definitely need a ratchet wrench to get that one. It's stuck to the gasket. Okay. And once it gets unstuck, it'll come There you off. go. Yeah, the bottom of the flange has notches, as you can see, guys, and you can get it up over top of that. But there you go. Oh. Manifolds are out. And that, my friends, is how you remove stock OEM exhaust manifolds from a 2019, actually it's probably gonna be 2015 and up, Dodge Charger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Big thanks to Chester County Transmissions for making this happen and collaborating with me on this video. Andy and Pete for working with me. It's always a pleasure. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. If you're stopping by for the first time, make sure you smash tap, do something to that subscribe button. Make sure you check out Chester Candy Transmissions. I'll have their information in the video description. As always, important stuff in the video description. If you want to get your stock manifolds removed from your Dodge Charger, or any vehicle for that matter, we love you guys. We'll see you on the next upload. Next upload is gonna be our Corsa long tube header installation. Oh, yeah, there's a little pressure in there. <laughs> All right, we gotta edit that one. <laughs>